done so yet, please pause the video and try this question on your own before moving on. Since we are trying to find the minimum, we have a classic optimization problem, and in such a problem we're going to need to come up with both a constraint equation as well as an objective equation. But first, let's define our variables. And in this problem, it will be relatively straightforward to do that. We can let x equal the first number and then y equal the second number. Our next goal is to come up with the constraint equation. And for that, we will notice that the question mentions that the two numbers must have a difference of 100. Now, of course, a difference implies a subtraction, so we could make the following equation. Next, we will come up with what is called the objective equation. And in this problem, our objective is to find the product of the two numbers so that that product is a minimum. So the product of a number could be represented by the letter P. And of course, product implies multiplication. So we can simply say that the product is equal to X multiplied by Y. Now our objective equation contains two variables, and before we can proceed, we need to express it in terms of a single variable, and that's where the constraint equation comes in. Now it's typical to try to solve the constraint equation for y, so we're going to do that in this problem, and to do that we could perhaps add y to both sides of this equation, and then subtract 100 from both sides. And from that we can see that y is equal to x minus 100. Now we simply need to make a substitution. We're going to take the expression x minus 100 and plug it in for y into our objective equation. And when we do that we can see that the objective equation is now expressed in terms of a single variable x. We can go ahead and distribute the x through the brackets. So here is the simplified form of the objective equation. Our next step is to compute the derivative of the objective equation. So the derivative of p can simply be represented as p prime, and then the derivative on the other side will require a basic power rule, where we pull the power down, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent to give us x to the first, and then the derivative of 100x, of course, will just be 100. After calculating the derivative, we can set it equal to 0. We'll then solve for x by adding 100 to the other side, and then dividing both sides by 2, and we can see that x is equal to 50. Now to confirm that this value of x actually indeed minimizes the product, we would have to apply the first derivative test. And in that test, we plot our critical value, which was 50, on a number line. And then we select a value that's less than the critical value and a value that's greater than the critical value and plug it into the derivative. So for example, we could choose 40 as well as 60 and plug it into p prime, the derivative. When you plug 40 into p prime, you will get a result that is less than 0, it's a negative. And when you plug 60 in, you will get a result that is greater than 0 or a positive. Now it turns out, of course, when the derivative of a function is less than 0, that means the function itself is decreasing, and we can show that with a downward sloping arrow. And when the derivative is positive, the original function is increasing, which we can show with an upward sloping arrow. Now, hopefully we can see from this diagram that right at 50, we would indeed have minimized the function. You can almost connect these two arrows and draw a graph, and you would see that indeed you have a minimum point when x is equal to 50. So 50 turns out to be the correct value of x, which is our first number. We recall when we solved the constraint equation for y, that y is equal to x minus 100. So if we plug in our x, we would easily be able to solve for y, and we would see that y is equal to negative 50. So there is the second number. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional calculus videos as well as videos from other subjects. You're welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.